Good morning. It is the morning of surgery. So I'm just in the truck waiting for Chris. We're heading out and um, it's a fairly long drive to Red Deer. So, and I usually nap most of the way. <laughs> I didn't sleep very well last night, of course. So I will update you when we get there. So I'm all checked in at Red Deer Regional Hospital and just waiting to hear from the surgeon. The sur surgery's not scheduled for another two hours, so I have to sit here and wait for two hours. And I'm not even allowed to have a sip of water. Boo hiss. Anyway, talk to you later. Well, I think the surgery went well. I'm still dopey. <laughs> but very, very hungry. I'll get something to eat. Heading home. Check on my baby chicks. Gotta get some painkillers too. Well, we just arrived home. I'm not quite so dopey now. I think one of the big problems might have been low blood sugar again. I think I should have put that on my file so the nurses would have known to get something in me to boost my blood sugar. Um, that's what happens when my blood sugar gets too low. I can't, I can't think, I can't function. So, um, and of course they were having a hard time waking me up. Anyway, we're home, we're letting the puppy out, and first thing I want to do before I unload the truck is check on the little baby chicks and let poor Hazel out <laughs> for a break. Bathroom break! Now the big challenge for me is I'm literally not allowed to even put my foot down. So, i got to go back to walking on the crutches with my full weight on them, which is going to be really hard. My left shoulder's still hurting from months ago doing that, but I'm going to have to get good at it again. I just looked in the mirror at my hair, <laughs> so I got that comb. I'm just waiting for Chris to take care of Sadie to get my crutches out of the back of the truck. Get her settled. I'm just going to keep the babies, Chris is putting the hazel out, just keep the babies from diving off of here. Yeah, she's got herself all fluffed up. Look at the inspector come in. And... I know, Mama's just taking a little bathroom break, sweeties. Here's her leg. Yeah. Look how fluffed up she is. She looks like a big pom-pom. She looks like a turkey. I shouldn't be turning my... <laughs> it's okay. Mm. Okay. Oh, look at... What? Oh my goodness! <laughs> look at... <laughs> It's always a gigantic one. Oh, there you go. You guys get to see her poop. Oh my, oh my goodness, and smell. You can't even believe it. Oh my goodness. Oh. Don't get your hand in the back area. Oh. Good girl. There she goes. She's getting turned around looking for her little babies. Oh. There. Okay, I'll get the Okay, okay. Whoa, step back. No. And you're cast. Yeah, that's just gross. Whoa. You can't even believe the smell. Oh, just gotta keep these guys in while Chris goes and gets some water and food. Look at those little wings. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is just awful having to stand here. It's just so gross. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm stuck here. I'm standing on one leg like a flamingo. Uh. <laughs> oh, look at the little angels. I think we're just going to end up with two chicks, guys. The other three still have no signs of pecking. So I think. If they haven't done something by tomorrow, I think we're going to give up. No, you get in there, little monster. 
give me a heart attack if you fall out of there. Yeah, you'll give me a heart attack. She picked my thumb. Little devil. Oh, I need to put my foot down so bad and I can't. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you gotta get away from here. Oh, no, little devils. You stay in there. Give Hazel some of her food, or is she okay? She'll eat that. Okay. Okay, we're gonna close this up, guys, and so I can get away from this nasty smell. I can't move them, Chris. Mm. Okay. Well, I'm finally sitting. Got my foot up and elevated. Man, this is torture. I've been just trying to walk on the crutches without even putting my foot down. That's brutal. But I'm so happy. The chicks are okay. Hazel's okay. We might only get those two chicks, but I don't care. I'm happy. She's happy. And um, Sadie was so excited to see us too. She actually started yodeling after Chris put her back in here while we went and checked on the chicks. And she never does that. So it's a long day for her when we're gone. But I'm actually not feeling too bad. I'm actually feeling better than I expected, but I, I still say I have a very high pain tolerance anyway. I walked on this thing for days <laughs> before I even went to the doctor. Um, but uh, this is gonna this is gonna be nasty trying to like I'm, I make lists in my head of all the things that need to be done and it just drives me out of my mind not being able to do it. Um, but, <laughs> can't do anything about it. I'm glad to have this done. I'm not feeling too bad right now. We picked up all the prescriptions, the painkillers. Um, while I was, when they wheeled me in for surgery, they were all discussing how much fentanyl they were gonna give me and I was not happy about that. It was kind of shocking, but I did not know fentanyl was the drug of choice now in uh, surgical theaters. And um, anyway, I'm just glad it's over. I'm really so glad it's over. And I'm glad to be back home. It's going to be really, it's going to be the, you know, almost fall before I can walk normally. Um, but hopefully I can walk normally after this. I think they said they put the plate in and either seven or 11 screws. I, I was still pretty bleary when she was talking about that. But I'm sure Chris will remember. Um, so hopefully this is gonna work and um, get to wear two shoes <laughs> in the fall. And I'm really grateful too that it's done while the weather's like this. I don't have to put socks on and be too hot. And um, I don't have to go, like, try and walk on slippery ice with these crutches or the boot or anything again this winter, hopefully. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. This is all going to work. And maybe I can go snowshoeing this winter, Rita. <laughs> or at least walking. My goodness, it would be nice to walk normal again. So I'm going to, again, get something to eat. I, I was joking with Chris. I should have. Um, he called Mr. Mike's because while I was still slurring and not even, he couldn't understand me, I was saying I wanted bruschetta at Mr. Mike's. <laughs> so um, as soon as we got to the parking lot, he ordered uh, bruschetta and uh, mm, panko shrimp. And uh, I practically inhaled it. I meant to show you guys. Uh, if you haven't tried the bruschetta at Mr. Mike's, you are missing out. If I was like on death row and was being executed, my meal of choice would be the bruschetta from Mr. Mike's, seriously. So I um, had that and absolutely inhaled it. And I could actually feel with every bite me being more clear-headed, 
and just a hundred percent better with every bite I took. So again, that was really not smart on my part to um, not remember to, to tell the nurses and the doctors about that. Um, because when my blood sugar drop drops, I literally I can't function, I can't think, I uh, it's really bad. So anyway, lots of really bad, but lots of really good today. Um, the babies are okay. It is just so beautiful out, and it's my favorite time of day. Uh, maybe I'll get some hammock time in, grab a couple of books, get some hammock time in in the next few weeks, and sit and fret about all the stuff I'm not getting done. That's what I do best. I fret about all the things I'm not getting done or can't do. So, anyway, I will probably update you after I manage to hobble out to bed and somehow get positioned to try and sleep. That should be fun. I must not put my foot down and get it covered in chicken poop and have to put it in my bed. No chicken poop in the bed. Yuck. So... <laughs> I guess you guys have heard enough about chicken poop today. Uh, I'm going to sign off for now and check in later. Well, it is late at night. I think it's about midnight. And Chris was <laughs> wanting to get me to go to bed so he could go to bed. He had to do all the driving as usual, so he's really tired. Um, I'm super glad, actually, that... It was day surgery. Some people are so horrified, but I like to be at home in my own bed, my own pillows, and uh, I can reach the window here to crack it for some fresh air. Um, it's difficult because this tiny house, has, this bedroom has such, I think I've got like 13 inches beside the bed to get in sideways with the crutches. So that I'm going, I'm moving down to a, a new double bed in the new tiny house to give myself a little bit more room. Um, but who expects to be trying to shimmy on crutches? Anyway, my leg is starting to really ache. And I got a terrible headache, I think probably from the anesthetic. Um, so, um, I think I got enough sleep today, but... I had a nap before the surgery, but um, it's really not, it's not as bad as, I, you know, I was ex expecting. I always get anxious, but um, I do have a very high threshold for pain. I had surgery 20 years ago. The anesthesiologists were horrified when I told them. My brother hit me in the face so hard with a baseball that it tore the cartilage away from my four and five vertebrae and sprayed bone fragments from my orbital bones into my sinuses. Just sprayed bone fragments. <clears throat> and I had those removed, fixed, everything broken, removed. This is a piece of cake compared to that surgery. So, um, I had another funny story I have to tell you. I had it, <clears throat> excuse me, huge molar removed a couple years ago in Grand Prairie. And, uh, the doctor, the dentist, had a really hard time getting it out. He actually had to break the tooth in half. And he said that my mouth is so small. <laughs> he was having a hard time working because my mouth is too small to work in. Well, I thought that was absolutely hilarious. And of course, I had to tell Chris and my dad that it was funny too. So anyway, I ended up going to a couple of different specialists to get an implant put in where that molar was removed and caps on this side and stuff. So anyway, two or three more dentists and a couple of them were specialists, you know, doing implants and everything. Every single one of them said it was really hard to work in my mouth because my mouth is so small. <laughs> now, of course, people that know me know this is really funny. Um, and then there was a intern as the anesthesiologist, a young guy, and the older, the, anest the senior anesthesiologist was a woman about my age, and she was pretty funny too. 
and they were both asking me to look at them straight on, and they were trying to figure out why my jaw didn't look really tiny in comparison to the rest of my head, because my mouth is so small. <laughs> and, and, like, they were asking me to open my mouth so they could look in my throat and everything, and how it was going to be difficult to, you know, put the airway in and all that kind of stuff. So, and of course I had left my, I keep joking that I'm going to get these doctors record them with my cell phone saying this stuff because Chris just laughs. He's like, that's ridiculous. You're making this up. But I mean, this is like the fourth or fifth and both the anesthesiologists agreed. So it was pretty funny. They were asking me to look at them straight on and, and not uh, trying to figure out, you know, why my jaw didn't look really tiny and all this kind of stuff. So that was pretty funny. My kids will be laughing about this too. Yeah. But I just had to tell you guys that. It just it's just so funny. Um anybody that knows me knows how funny it is. Um because me having a small mouth is not something that somebody really connects the two, you know. Anyway, another specialist, two of them. Consensus opinion. But um so Chris had a good laugh about that again today. But uh, anyway, super, super people. It was 40 years ago yesterday I had my boy in that hospital. And the surgeons, the nurses, everybody were just wonderful. Um, which makes it easier when you're really anxious about something like this. So anyway, but a little bit of levity in the day too. Always, I can always see that I always find something to laugh about. I always see something funny in a lot of very serious situations. but And uh, for my little sister, my bratty little sister, I have done absolutely everything the doctor said. Mostly I didn't put my foot in chicken poop. Um, I've got it elevated higher than my heart. I took my pills so I don't get blood clots. I mean, you're really good. Girl Rhonda Lee, she said I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't listen. I don't know why she says things like that. <laughs> anyway, um, gonna be a long haul, mostly because I hate to sit still. I cannot stand this. It, it the, the pain is nothing compared to me going loony, having to not be able to do stuff. But um, I just thought I'd give you an update before I pass out, and my nurse has passed out. Hopefully the dog is passed out, and um, anyway, I'll, I guess I'll have to rely on him to get more footage of my little chicks, my little peepers, and make a decision on those other three eggs. Some executive decisions, but it's been a long day, long haul, and hopefully this one will be over fairly soon. Good night, and... Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.